there. I'm Joyce Griffin Sobel. I'm the president of the uh, Helene Full College of Nursing. We are located on 120th Street, Madison Avenue. We are housed in a church. There's no relation with the church uh, other than there being our landlord. And we have two entire floors uh, in this building. We just finished a renovation. We moved in here in the spring of 21. Uh, it is gorgeous, and so we want to show you around at some of the things that we were able to do with this space. We added another 14,000 square feet um, to our um, college, and so now we have a total of 50,000 square feet. So we can start in my office, which is a beautiful thing, if I say so myself. Uh, I decided interior decorating will be my uh, next career. Uh, but we spend an awful lot of time here at the conference table um, running the college and deciding how uh, things should be run and making those kinds of decisions. So uh, it's a lovely space and we're very happy to be in it. So we'll go on out here. And out here is where my assistant sits to say hello. <laughs> So down this hall, we have some administrative offices. We call this side the West Wing. The old unrenovated space is the East Wing. Um, so here is where my chief of staff sits and our provost who's out of town at the moment. But these are their offices here. They're quite lovely. And then finance is over here and they make sure that we have money available for the right things. In here is the boardroom that we use for lots of meetings and we're able to um, connect with all the board members online with Zoom. We have a lounge over there for when they come in person. The board has primarily been online for the entire pandemic, so having a spectacular technology in here was essential which we do. Our um, uh, consultants who have installed a lot of the technology tell us that we have the most sophisticated technology of any school in the state. So we're very proud of that. And most of the time it works. Every now and again we have a glitch, but uh, not too often, thankfully. So we have some offices in here. And then over here we have a faculty and staff lounge where people can have their lunch. So down this hallway are more uh, classroom spaces. And we made sure when we did the renovation that we had good spaces for the students to relax in. So this is a student lounge. These tables pull apart. Um, so students can work as a group or individually. So we're very happy with that. This is a classroom which is in use at the moment. So this is one of our new simulation labs. And we have put significant amounts of money into this, into replacing the mannequins into making sure they are the most high tech. This is our birthing mannequin, so she gives birth and we can make this as accurate as we want to. Uh, most students never see an actual birth in clinical, um, and so it's really important that they see the process and understand that. And here is her little baby, and he is the, the same weight as a normal infant. So we can show them how not to drop their head <laughs> and all that, but isn't it cute? And he just feels so good in the crook of your arm. This fella is our toddler and he's supposed to be three to four. He does all kinds of things. He seizes, he can run a fever, he can cry. Um, he can do all the things that a baby can do when they're sick. We can put IVs in all of these mannequins. We can put body fluids on them so that the students understand what things look like. And we're pretty creative about how we make uh, body fluids such as uh, poop 
um, is mustard and water, uh, and uh, it looks very uh, authentic. Um, these, uh, this fella here is our most expensive mannequin. He's very sophisticated. He can be intubated, um, and uh, all kinds of things can be inserted into him. Uh, she's one of the old ones. She kind of looks a little old. But here we put in some of the equipment that hospitals actually use. This is a small Pixis, which is a medication administration system. That way we can use barcodes between the mannequin and the uh, med so that the student knows when the patient is getting the right medication. So, so this, these uh, labs are, one is Hospital Helene and the other is Hospital Fold. We thought that was very clever. Uh, we have another classroom here, which uh, there's only a couple of students in there. We just take it. So this is some of your technology. There's a test or something going on in here, so we better not interrupt. And over here is our skills lab, and students can practice tests. This is a full medication administration system, just like any hospital uses. It's actually a lot more sophisticated than what some of the hospitals use. Over here is a code card, and we do practice uh, having students respond to a cardiac arrest. First time that happens in the hospital is extremely nerve-wracking for the student, as you can imagine. So the more practice that they get with some of the things that are required of a nurse, the better it is. But here they can practice body part things, doing a sterile field for a central line, tray care, uh, all kinds of uh, skills, and that's what's uh, done here. Our technology is such that we can have a simulation going on over here in Hospital Helene, and we can beam that into every classroom so that we can teach uh, from another room, what's going on in the simulation, what's going well, what's not going well. The students get to view their video of how they did um, afterwards and we can review with them uh, how they performed. A lot of times uh, an instructor will say to a student, uh, well, gee, it would have been better if you had done this. And the student will say, well, I did do it. And then we look at the video and sure enough, they didn't. So <laughs> it's a good learning. All right, we'll walk down the hall over here. We have a home care lab, so we can practice how a student would care for somebody in their home. Uh, unfortunately, this is bigger than the average New York City apartment, but we pretend and we clutter up the floors and everything to make it look like an actual home. We have a very large bathroom, far larger than a New York City typical apartment bathroom but that is where students can learn how to transfer somebody in a wheelchair onto the toilet uh, or use some of the other mobility devices like knee scooters and uh, crutches and that sort of thing. So this is, uh, and we have a couple of offices here. This is our fabulous director of simulations sitting there. <laughs> and she plans all of these simulations for the students. So over here, we have another simulation space, and we use this primarily for OB, labor and delivery kinds of things. Uh, there's a control room in the back. This is one of the first ones that we renovated. This used to be a lounge, so this one now is a very effective learning space. Over here is our library, and it's equipped with lots of uh, computers of which the students use regularly. Most of our uh, collection is online now. The days of books and stacks are over, unfortunately. I used to love roaming around in the stacks, but no such luck anymore. And this is a conference room over here where we're having a conference. This is a student lounge over here. Uh, where the students can get a snack and uh, relax for a bit when they're not in class. Over here, this used to be a, a collection of small offices, which the, we knocked the walls down, and this will now be a classroom. We're just now 
waiting for the furniture, but the technology is here, as you can see, so we're ready to go when the furniture comes. We're always short of classroom space. And this is going to be a second science lab. We're just waiting for the equipment to arrive. But the technology has been installed. As you can see, it'll be nice and spacious. Right now, we're using it for tutoring spaces. The students come in and work with tutors. AKO, our chief of staff, installed all of these wonderful screens where we can update the students on what's going on and when they need to register and get advised, whatever. This is admissions over here. We have a couple of classrooms on this side. And over here is, uh, on the left is the science lab, where, which is lots of okay, where students uh, learn microbiology, anatomy, and physiology. Uh, we have some very beautiful equipment locked up in the cabinets here for the microphones and that sort of thing. And there's an equipment room behind here that we keep uh, a lot of the things that they use for science lab. Uh, there's a limit of 26 people in this room, so that's why we needed a second lab. So that new one used to be my old office. And this here is our computer room. We do a lot of testing in here, uh, and we do uh, very heavy proctoring, uh, whether it's online or in person, because uh, unfortunately we need to do that, as every other school does as well. So. Uh, we can do that here. It's a very clear line of sight. All right, let me show you our large classroom down here. Is, is there a student? Are they in the 301? Okay, never mind. So we'll go upstairs now and look at some of the spaces up there. All right, so this is up on our fourth floor. Over here we have a student lounge where they can cook their lunches and uh, get themselves a cup of coffee and some water, so that's nice and spacious. They use that very heavily. Um, over here we have some offices and some of the skills labs that were in existence when we came. We've uh, done some updating for those spaces as well. This is one of our larger classrooms. And as you can see, there's a lot of students that would be in this room. Um, so it really does require good classroom management techniques. Uh, but they use it, uh, and the screens show the slides um, down the side and in the front, so no matter where they sit, they have a good view. The students in this lab, I see. So this is our faculty office area, and we renovated this right after we came because the faculty didn't have privacy or um, didn't have privacy or space to uh, meet with students. So now everybody has a very nice office in the door. Uh, and, uh, you know, I was insisting that we have glass in the front of the door because a faculty member shouldn't be uh, alone with a student behind closed doors uh, in this day and age. Unfortunately, it's a reality, but uh, they're very happy with this space. So all of our faculty essentially are up here. Now we wanted to show you our outside. This is the entrance that the students use. It's on the corner of 120th and Madison Avenue. Across the street is Marcus Garvey Park. Uh, there's a dog park right there, which I hear the barking all day long, but it's kind of relaxing in a way. Um, and so if we walk down this way, you can see the building in which we're housed. Um, this is the church part of the building. So we have our own separate entrance uh, from here, but as you can see, it's very, very nice. Um, and uh, they are good landlords to us. So we're very happy with that. So this is a summary of our space. 
students. You get a feel for the location of the college and the environment that the students have. Um, they are very happy with the environment that we have. They're not so happy with parking, but that's in New York City. Uh, issue that's never going to go away, I'm afraid. So thanks again, and see you soon.